Showed it to the class. The class were like, you know, this is great, man. Good job. You know, you really, you really took a camera somewhere, and then afterwards you took the footage and you assembled it into a bunch of moving images. Like that's what they told me. They said, "Good job. You completed the assignment." Uh, so that was all we had to work with. Um, but then we realized, hey, let's make part two the fact that Mr. Blansky is somewhere out there and he abandoned us. He abandoned me. freshman year of college and I remember meeting Joe for the first time uh, he had very long blonde hair he's very uh, very easygoing and I thought wow this is this is a cool guy uh, this is someone I could definitely see myself hanging out with uh, being friends with uh, drinking with playing music with uh, eating with s sleeping in the same room with uh, walking with talking with how about Native American fight song? Oh, yeah. Over the years, it's kind of lose touch, keep in touch. Uh, we went to Wisconsin once together. That was really fun. And Joe came and a couple of my friends drank some alcohol and went swimming, skinny dipping. I saw Joe's penis. <laughs> Uh, now he is a musician. Joe is a musician and he's living off of the music he makes. Uh, and he uh, hangs out with interesting people and uh, they take care of one another so he doesn't really need a job and he doesn't need schooling for that. And he seems very happy where he is so I'm happy for him. So we made it happen. We knew that April such and such Mr. Blansky will be in Chicago. We're always in Chicago. So it was set. We were going to film him one night at a party, and then the next day we were going to go to his house, follow him around all day, get some great interviews. We had some excellent questions lined up. So next step, we get to the party. So the end of the party, I go up to Joe, and he's been, he, the whole night, he is giving us uh, kind of just, just red flags, red flags. First of all, he's clearly uncomfortable in front of the camera. Uh, he tries to escape any anytime he can, once we get the camera on him. Uh, I ask him, I say, hey, tomorrow can we get a uh, living room performance? And what does he say? He says, That'd be weird. Uh, so anyways, uh, at the end of the party, we say, All right, Joe, tomorrow we're going to meet. We're going to get some great questions. We're going to get some great interviews. Like I said, we've got some superb questions that are going to evoke a lot of superb answers. But what we need from you is just to be there and to answer your phone so we can know where you are and how to get there because we didn't know where there was and he said 
Okay. I have a documentary to film, and you are the key part of it, Joe. This is no joke, Joe. Siv. Joe, this is Justin. Give me a call, buddy. Do you feel hurt? <sighs> you know, it's, uh... You know, as a child, I was abandoned. Uh, growing up, people would come into my life. Disappear. And yeah, it hurts. It hurts to be told by someone. It, it hurts to be here, all alone here. And then to see someone over here and say, hey, and then they say, hi. And then you come together for a second and you said, hey, I was feeling pretty lonely over there and they said hey it's cool I understand and they say but hey check this out you don't have to be alone anymore because I'm with you and then you say cool and they said yeah I'll see you tomorrow and you said great I'm gonna go to that lonely spot but you promise you'll be here tomorrow and he said yeah so then you both go to your lonely spots then you come back hello